This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Well, it's happy Wednesday here for us. This I'm Glenn Martinez and my partner Natalie Cash. We thank you for tuning in to Think Tech Hawaii. We think we have an interesting show for you today. Today is something yeah. special. We're going to get off the farm a little bit, so to speak. We're going to go to the Philippines. And we've made about three trips to the Philippines, all courtesy and funded by Consuelo Foundation right here in Hawaii. They're located right here on Hotel Street, right downtown. And they're funded by a, a lady who was a Filipino who married an American general and never went back to the Philippines. And when the general passed away, uh, she was getting her affairs in orders and you know, getting everything, you know, the taxes and all that kind of stuff. And they found out she had about $300 million in the bank. And uh, in the Philippines, that the Consuelo family down there is quite large. So while she was alive, she set up a trust. And about four years before she passed away, she got it all in order and got it running. Rather than just writing it in her will, she started spending her money before she passed away. And basically, two-thirds of the money is spent on the children yes. of Hawaii and the other two-thirds on the children of the Philippines. She didn't have any children of her own through her, in her marriage, but... She really liked the kids, and it has been a major support. And Consuelo Foundation here in Hawaii has done some great projects. One is out in Waianae in Natalie's yeah. backyard. Mm -hmm. They did a whole housing subdivision mm -hmm. out there for the people, and they funded so many different programs and health-oriented programs. Yeah. Well, when Dr. Benny Ron was with the vice chancellor's office at University of Hawaii, he hired me to be a lecturer for University of Hawaii. And pretty much, he brought his class out to my farm, Olamana Gardens, and we would do hands-on kind of things. So he taught the academics in the college, and then he'd bring them out, and we were the show-and-tell place. And that. And then he invited us to, he was taking a team from University of Hawaii, and it was a team of social people, psychiatrists, and, and different fundamental social planners uh, to bring them to the Philippines with the Consuelo Foundation. And he nominated Natalie and I to go, and we would be the show and tell part of it. Mm -hmm. And so we did it. And in seven days in the Philippines, we visited like 12 different places and farms and set up. We do two places, three places a day. Some places we spayed overnight. But we went to about three different islands. We went from Manila up to Baguio, and et cetera. But our all time favorite is. Um, Father Ronke's place at Toloi Foundation. Mm -hmm. It's a um, um, compound where they house homeless soldiers. Yeah, there. it's an orphanage. Orphanage. Yeah. And he's a yeah. Catholic priest there, and yeah. he has his church there, and he also mm -hmm. has dormitories for each of the kids that's there, right. and a school for and them. And so in Consuelo Foundation, in fact, my, my person who's kind of like, my say, my boss when I'm in the Philippines, um, is Danny. Danny found him. It, Father Rocky had 11 or 12 kids yeah. in a by 10 by 10 foot room, and they were kind of the untouchable street kids, orphanages. Yeah. And, so, and so when he saw that, he said, we can do better than this. And he petitioned the government. And anyway, Father Rocky ended up getting 16 acres of land, okay? And it's right there across the street from a modern mall, yeah, California Alamong. Pizza and all that. Yeah. It's in Alamong, yeah. you know, which is a suburb of uh, uh, Manila. Manila. Yeah. And so we get out there. It's 16 acre big campus with a stone brick wall all the way around. Yeah. And on the other side is a squatter's village. Yeah. Behind them is a mental institute. Sound and a gated effects community built in. behind of them. Yeah, and then a gated community on the other side. So yeah. it's kind of funny. If you walked around, you would see quite a cross section of life in the yeah. Philippines, right? From the rich and famous to the you know poor. Yeah. And so when we get there, they go and they show us a, a piece of land, a scrub acreage, like the bone yard, which is like behind the basketball court where you hide everything and the construction materials and things like that, and a little garden area. It was so dry and so terrible. I walked out, and it looked like there were rocks, but they weren't rocks. They were just broken pieces of concrete. This whole site, this 16 acres, where they had torn down buildings and where there had been a rock quarry. So it was an armpit piece of property. And then that's quite typical of governments. They don't give you the best fertile piece of property, no. et cetera. But through the, in the years building up, in 10 years, he built his orphanage up to 240 kids. Yes, okay. He sure did. Then he and we were really proud. It's neat as a pin. The kids yeah. are very respectful in that. And they take them from kindergarten through high school, and then two years of vocational school. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and they're fully wardrobed out and yeah. go out and get a job, you know, yeah. and they're employable, right? So he's taking the most unfavorable, unwanted, untouchable kids and make them into great citizens. It's really yeah. amazing. So we have some pictures here we'd like to go through and show you some of what our experience was in our first 12 days at Taloy Foundation. And by the way, Taloy means welcome. Okay, so it's a welcome foundation. What a neat name. So if we could pull up one of some of those slides there for me, that'd be great. So this is what we started doing. We went into it. It was an abandoned uh, field. They had to dig down and put foundation in because Manila gets hit with four or five hurricanes a year. It just gets trashed. There I am walking away there to you. You see the back side of me there. That's the best side of me, I think. You see the concrete mixture, and you see the scrub land, the trees. All the trees are gone now. This is all 100% aquaponic. Everything was mixed. That mixture turned on at 7 in the morning, and it ran all night to 11 o'clock at night, mixing concrete. And so they had to build the foundations and do it all up with a lot of recycled, reused material. And these guys know bending rebar, let me tell you. Everything was straight and true. There I am with my Filipino crew, and that's Father Rocky there to the left. Now you see those railings? We had to have a way for the kids not to fall in, so they built these railings to go all the way around. And that they are going to set plants on top of it, but that way a kid cannot just walk up and fall in. Now this is the original little dirt garden they had going on, okay? Mm -hmm. And that. And uh, you, not much of an area. And let me tell you, when it's about 105 degrees out, it was a, not a happy place to no, work there, was really it? Hot. No, and so they you tried to grow food. Too. Right. So you see us laying the pipes out. Now, here in Hawaii, we will, those pipes are all going to be buried underground. We'll go right to the next slide. You'll see everything had to be dug into the ground and cemented in because of the hurricanes and the you know, tornadoes that come through yeah. the, the uh, what do you call, um, what's the opposite of a hurricane? Uh, cyclone, no, you know, yeah, cyclone. that. So you see there, we start digging them in, and see how they cut out the concrete? They're going to put the pipe in and put it back so there's no trip hazard, okay? Everything got carried in by hand, and we cleared the land off. Natalie and I'd be out there at 3 and the 4 in the morning with our levels, striking the line for them guys, doing the engineering. And I lived in fear of getting it wrong. Boy, what if the water doesn't flow? And these are, they, we inherited six ponds. And we made them, they were only filled them that high, and the overflow was such that that's as far as you could do it. We raised the overflow, and now those tanks have twice as much water in them. And so we have six 5,000-gallon tanks, and each tank has five to 6,000 fish in it. And there, and there you got the, the, the guys there pouring concrete and putting it in. They carry all of these sacks of the concrete up, and when they poured the concrete out, they saved the bag to go back and get rocks. This is a sump pump at the bottom of the hill, a tank they built in there. And those blue pipes going to the left there go up to a water tower. Yeah. So this was a unique one, and there's our water tower. So you see the water in the fish tank is at the base. We pump it up to the tower, and then we can gravity feed it around the property. Yeah. They now have one 30 feet tall, sure quite do. a bit more. <laughs> that mixer is something else. They towed it in with a truck and they pushed it by hand. It's amazing how they pushed it up steps and, <laughs> and over all kind of things. Now you see these bare tanks there with the, the tarp over the top? All that's going to get fixed up when they are uh, going to build a canopy over the whole thing. This entire and area you're going to see in pictures. Tanks, it, huh? And they're going to turn it into fish All tanks. fish tanks. and. All this area, scrub area here, it's all going to get cleared out. And so in yeah. 12 days, we sent them on the path. We built one small system yeah. for them, one fish tank, one 75-foot uh, grow bed. There's our 30-foot tower we have now. And you have a greenhouse there to the left. And everything was welded right there on the site. Sure so these are the students that graduated from there and now work for them continuing to build. In fact, their crews built all of their buildings, the cafeteria, the basketball court, everything. So you see the amount of concrete we're pouring there and going in, and the plants are already started. They didn't wait. They started planting right away. And so when we go back now, this is on our first trip, we go back now, and it's over four acres of aquaponics oh on the gosh, campus. Oh, my so amazing. Yeah. Also, we've taken the population of this campus from 240 kids to over 800 kids. Yeah. Yeah. 
And what really got me to buy in into helping and volunteering with these guys, and we volunteered, we got paid by Consuelo to go there first week, and since then we have volunteered a lot of hours, and Consuelo's funded all of our trips back and forth. It's really been great mm -hmm. uh, uh, for it. And so some of the things that we go do is, now when we go back now, it's all covered, it's all under yeah, canopy. We, can we have outside right classrooms. You got some of those? Yeah. Let's see if we have some slides on that. Mm -hmm. So here we are welding everything up. So there was a mis misunderstanding. They asked me what I do. I work half a day. Well, here on my farm, it's from 8 to 12. And I said, well, I work from 8 to 12. And they turned around to the Filipino crew and asked them if they were willing to work 8 to 12. And they said, yeah. Well, there was a misunderstanding because their 12 was midnight. So they worked from 8 in the morning till midnight every they day sure for 12 did. days, That's straight right. through, no breaks. Yeah. And that. And they learned a lot about plumbing and rigging aquaponics. So much so now that my first trip was 12 days, the next trip was four days, yeah. the next trip was one day, and I think the last trip we had lunch and walked around for an hour, <laughs> and that was it. They're very uh, enterprising. and that's a stainless steel tank. They laid it on the ground sideways to become the sump tank and then concreted around it. Everything is absolutely bulletproof. This tank was welded up on site. That's over 30, 35 feet tall. And we pumped the water all the way up there, and we can send it anywhere on the campus, gravity feed. And so they're totally self-sustaining. Right? Yep. And you see that, that catwalk up there kind of faint in the picture against the clouds. That's a little spooky. It's rebar wrapped in a circle, tack welded around. And, that, and uh, they have a ladder going up the side. It's just welded rebar all the way up the side. And I did not know I was scared of heights until I got up on the top of that and I yeah. looked down at the ground and found out, <laughs> huh, at a certain age, it's there. a time to keep your feet on the ground. Yeah. yeah? Uh -huh. But uh, this is an air-powered system. It's a motor. It's a, called a, a hybrid system. We use a motor, and then I inject air to put the water up on top of this sure tower. And yeah. that. So here we are doing the runs on that cement and mixer there's there. There's your um, siphon. There's yeah, the siphon right there, the orange one right in the middle. Now, here in Hawaii, I would use a 55-gallon drum with a 3-inch siphon, but they weren't into doing the plastic and the drum. No. So they built concrete tanks, and okay. that was their siphon. And we had 4 and 6-inch. Here in America, we'll use a lot of plywood with holes drilled in it. They used reinforcing wire, yeah. put plastic over the top, and then stuck the plants in yeah. it because they can't tolerate the rot in the wood. And plywood there is very dear, very expensive. Yeah. So this is their first grow bed. Bed. Yep, first grow beds. The float bed mm -hmm. that they did. Yep, and the water's two feet deep under it, and that stabilizes the temperature, and those walls are six inches thick of reinforced concrete. That's right. So th they really fight the heat very, very well. On they it. did. Yeah. Well, take a little short break here, and uh, Think Tech Hawaii will be right back and show you some more of the Philippines. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Freedom, is it a feeling? Is it a place? Is it an idea? At Dive Heart, we believe freedom is all of these and more, regardless of your ability. Dive Heart wants to help you escape the bonds of this world and defy gravity. Since 2001, Dive Heart has helped children, adults, and veterans of all abilities go where they have never gone before. Dive Heart has helped them transition to their new normal. Search DiveHeart.org and share our mission with others and in the process help people of all abilities imagine the possibilities in their lives. I just walked by and I said, what's happening, guys? They told me they were making music. Hi, Glenn here with Olamana Gardens and Natalie Cash, and we're talking about Toloi down in the Philippines, but I normally have a tool every week. I like to show something. So this one is a simple one. I think you guys will identify with this one. This one has just changed our lives. You see a cell phone. To me, I see my camera, and I see my video camera. We used to carry video cameras, a whole suitcase of them with us. And we are shooting sure. so much on our phone, I'm almost embarrassed to admit how much we're shooting with yeah. it. 
And this week we got a, an added little thing. It's a little clip-on that goes on here, and it's a microscope. If you go up on Amazon.com or that, and just do a cell phone clip-on microscope, it's a little clip-on. It'll fit any phone. You know, they give you different clip-ons, and you put it over. But then you can come up, and I can take close-up microscopic pictures. You know, like 400 power, which is really quite ample. And it has a built-in light on it. Like on your phone, a lot of people have a light. Well, this has a light on that microscope. So when you get down, wow. you're not in your own shadow. It's really great for me. And it's so great for me because you can hit share and share it yes. with people. When we were doing our big cameras, professional cameras, Olympus cameras, great cameras, but I had to go all the way back to the office, load it into my computer, then hit an email, then send it. Yes. And the people to get it, they had to go look at their email yes. and get it. Now we send it phone to phone and the people see it immediately. And we're doing so, so much true. troubleshooting and that. And we had a, a very well-heeled client uh, come down the driveway not too long ago. And he hopped out, very well-dressed man, and he comes over and he says, I'd like to introduce you to my crew before we start the mm -hmm. tour. And he was taking a tour of our farm, a little $25 educational tour, Ola Mata Garden. And he said, but before we do it, I, I would like to introduce you to my crew. And the man was all alone. <laughs> and, and he whips out his iPad, he opens it up, flips it open, he hits his iPad, and he turns it to me, and he opens up, and there's the greenhouse. Yeah. And he hits it, and you can hear a beeper going off in the greenhouse. His crew comes walking over, and they've got an iPad in the rack. Yeah. And they come over, and he says, hey, Paul, I want you to meet Glenn. Yeah. And he turns around to me, to Glenn, and he says, and this is Natalie, yeah. and that. And he says, hey, before I go do the tour, let's show Glenn that siphon that just won't stop. And they walked over with their iPod, they showed it to me, and I'm troubleshooting this thing. And these guys are in Wisconsin, you know? And it's just so quick and easy. It has so changed our lives. Yes. And before we even took a tour, you might say, I earned my lunch right there that day. <laughs> we fixed the siphon. We, we were able to spot the problem. It was an air leak right away. They fixed it. They glued it down and no more problem. But what a transformation on us. And also, when we're in the Philippines of that, for me to be able to take a picture of a diseased plant, and I sent it mm. to Dr. Benny Ron, and he's with Aquaculture Hub. You guys can look that up on the internet, aquaculturehub.org. Fantastic. It's free. You can yes. join, and you get on their newsletter. It's everything about aquaponics and aquaculture. Yes. Well, do you have some more slides in the Philippines? Yes, we do. You do? All right. Now for the time for the improvement. Ah, the improvement. So you saw the base work going in there. That was the 12 days of hard work. Now I think we have some pictures of as it's growing in. Now you see all the shade cloth that they're putting all over it? That's pretty neat. And they built, they welded up, and they put it on, and that was the first stage. And then as they get on, you see they did the screen netting across the fish to shade the fish. That kept them a lot cooler. And then see all the plants going in the ring all the way around? That's the, and by the way, all those plants are for sale. If you come there and you meet Father Rocky, bring your checkbook because he's <laughs> going to get you. And that, this is where we grow the azola. Now you see the greenhouses starting to come alive and all the shade cloth, right? And the azola and duckweed is fed to the fish, right? So we grow the food that we feed the fish, which is really great. Now the rock beds and the cinder beds are coming in. Now this is just when it's first starting. You look across that, if you go back today, you cannot see across That's this room. Right. It's like a jungle in there. Yes. Just an awesome amount of food, okay? And see all the plants? They don't only harvest and sell the, the plant, like cut and sell the lettuce, they will sell the potted plants. Now you see those triangles in the middle? I skipped off all the area. Any oddball area that wasn't four foot by 20 foot, I skipped it. In, in my American mind, it was not economical to develop it. Father Rocky went behind me and every little triangle trapezoid area filled it in and made a fish tank out of it and, and is growing in it. And if he ran out of flat space, he started hanging things up. They came up with their own systems here. See those boards going across and then hanging the plants there? Now that water goes up and down every hour. So it wets the plant and then it goes back down. It comes up, wets the plant. Now see what I'm talking about? You can't see across the room now. Can I just point out to Glenn, he doesn't just use the flat surface to That's grow right. in. He uses his um, hanging pots. Hanging pots. That's and right. he waters 
the water with through sprinkler systems yep. that waters into the The hanging. water that we did up to the tower yeah. is now trickle fed back down to all those plants, right? And when you walk around, every plant's for sale. Yes. Now, the orphanages, the, all the kids, they work one hour a day in the garden. For that, they get room, board, and education for one hour of work okay. in the garden. Three get times fed a three day times plus, a day. Plus right. That. Yep. And so it really made a difference. And the heartbreak for me, I started to say, what got me to really buy into this project? That was when Father Rocky walked over and he showed me where the 240 kids lived. They had a girl's dorm, they had a boy's dorm. Then he walked over and showed me two empty dorms, all painted, all full of bunk beds, all made up, blankets on them, pillows, the whole thing, and they're empty yeah. because they couldn't take any more kids in yes. because of the food bill every That's week right. was killing them. Every week, they got to go out and raise the money to feed these orphan mm -hmm. kids. Well, now these kids are raising their own food, and they get to go out and sell the plants and make a side income, ornamental plants. Let's see, we have a few more pictures. And Father Rocky did good because... Now you see it going green? Now, Natalie, what about those posts? I see oh, all the posts are painted. It's just so amazing what they yep. did with all the... Cement. You yep. don't see cement there. You don't you see bare see cement anymore. It's all painted. And all see the painted. awnings they're putting up all over the top? All the children want to be in the greenhouse yes. now. It's a favorite classroom area. Yep. And the food is, is great. You know, uh, delicious. That's a personal taste. You can tell how beautiful it is and, uh, and how disease-free we are because plants get unlimited food and nutrition. Yes. Okay, the water and the nutrition and the water and the fish water. And see how every little column is painted going up and that. And look at all the recycled material that they're using in there. Everything from the wire, that's like a wire fencing in the Philippines and that. They're quite clever. In fact, every now and then, I'd see something a little weird that I've never seen before and didn't quite understand what they're doing. I would say, well, well what are you doing? And what would they say, Natalie? Experimenting. Experimenting. That was a catch-all <laughs> phrase that got them through everything, right? No matter what crazy thing they're doing. But when we got there, there was like a, say, a cafeteria, and then there was a gymnasium. There was yes. about 15 or 16 feet, and there was a two-lane, two strips oh, yeah, of concrete port sure. where the trucks would back in and deliver my concrete and deliver my yeah. rock for me. We went back on our last trip. There's no more driveway anymore. No. He's got IBC totes, totes on yeah. both sides, four feet out, four feet out, a walkway down the middle, yeah. and it is just choke plants from one end to the other. It is. Do we have any other shots of it? Yeah. Let's see what else we got. Ah, now here you go. See that it says aquaponics uh, there and organic? Well, see, see Taloi Aquaterra. See that? A Q U A T E R R. A uh, hydroponic. Ponic. Terra hydroponic is, Terra is for earth, you know, going to the terrain. And what that means is they take the fish water, certainly doing the aquaponics the way I taught them, but then they take that fish water and they irrigate the crops that they have in the field, okay, yeah. and all the potted plant. And then, see all these plants stacked up here? Look, he made um, yep. towers. Yep, made towers, <laughs> vertical towers. How's that? Those are just plastic bags up there and all the shelves. And this used to be a driveway in between buildings. Shelved it out, and they got plants growing. Yeah. Now, this is a wall of plants. You can walk over and pick them up. Now we go back, and they're doing designs in the wall. They can actually yeah. write, like you saw in the other one, right in the wall yeah. on the freeway. Some of the pictures are really neat. Uh, I don't know if I have a picture of in this one. One, I had one no, uh, uh, tank at the end. There were two pieces of pipe sticking yeah. up. I came back and I did a double take. They painted on a diver's face and made it look like he was looking through binoculars, <laughs> yeah. you know, from, and painted that eyeballs so on the end. Just cute as can be. And, uh, and on our company t-shirts, we don't have them with us today, but there's a half fish, half plant. It's a fish, yeah. this half animal, half plant. And it was drawn by an eighth grade kid, did it, and it became our corporate logo. And yeah. that and we, we paid the kid uh, you know, for it. Uh, Father Rocky gave us the, the, the right to use it. Yes, he did. Yeah. So we oh, have the... Um, ah, now field. we're going to the terra. This was a quarry site, and it terrace is going up. It's about 30 feet high on the back side. They terrace up, and they walk the aquaponics all the way up. So you mm -hmm. see the water tower there to the right? It's taller than the hill is. You see it all the way over there to the right, St. Louis Hill Tower? Mm -hmm. We pump the fish water up into that, and then it gravity feeds this whole thing. And this playground there, that's the soccer field. Yeah. And all oh, the kids live for soccer, There's right? There's fish tanks at the There's bottom. There's a fish tank all the way around the, the yeah. soccer field. You have fish tank. 
It looks like a bull run, like you know, if you were doing a rodeo where you'd run the bulls back. Yeah. And they put the fish tanks in. And Father Rock is in charge of 40 other orphanages in the greater Manila area. And this is spreading from one orphanage to yes, the other. Is. So what Natalie and I took 12 days out of our lives to help them get started and that, and Consuelo covered our expenses and everything mm -hmm. for it. Then you, you look at this and you see how serious they've gotten about the plumbing and the rocks and the growing yeah. of the food yeah. and that. And so they're not a... just doing it. So this is looking down the hill. This is all green now. These are the construction photos uh, going on. This is a green oasis. When you yes, walk, look over, you walk in, people say, I don't see the aquaponics. See the it's whale? just a green hill. And it does a lot of uh, decorative bath. stuff, the bird baths <laughs> and fountains. So there's a sense of aesthetics to it. It's not just all utilitarian. And the kids go through it. It's like a maze going through it, yeah. all the pathways. Yeah. And so that. Can continue. Uh, yeah. He just goes on. And now so now you see it starting to grow yeah. in, okay? Now it's a field of green. Yeah. And uh, we go out on the highways, they take those cups, and there's a barrier in, in, the, in the city road, and they, they want to, people to not cross, they put a fence. They go out and they hang up these plants on the fence. They do. And it's really gorgeous. And yeah. not everything is food. Notice a lot of ornamental here. Yeah. Well, the kids put their tag or their number on the side, and when they take it out to the farmer's market, the kids get half of the money of what their plant sells for. Okay. Now, notice the fish tank underneath. Yep. In America, it'd just be a fish tank. They put stands in it and put the plants yes, up on top. Do. Nothing's they wasted. Utilize and here's these walls space. of plants I'm talking about. Isn't they cute pots? And they're made to hang on a fence. And... Uh, so they do that. So that's all lettuce. It's an edible wall. And this is their version of doing a, a vertical garden. Yeah. They just coil the fence in a circle and hang these plants on it. And it, they made it. It has little hooks in it. Yep. But wherever you walk, water is flowing. That's right. Yep. So you have the sound of water and the coolness. It's something like being in a hotel or next to a, a lake. You sit next to the water, you know, that you just feel better and cooler. Just yeah. for being there. You mm -hmm. don't actually have to get into the water. Yeah. But uh, we like to think Dr. Benny Ron of uh, Aquaculture Hub, he's now located over in Texas. He's left University of Hawaii, and he's over with, I believe, University of Texas now, or college over there in Austin, Texas, right? But, and Israel. And, and in Israel. And uh, his site is international. Aquaculture yeah. Hub, you can be anywhere in the world. You yes. get on it, and it's, it's just a great sharing thing. You can ask a question and you'll get an answer. At 3 o'clock in the morning, I can ask a question, and somewhere, yeah. somebody's awake, That's somewhere right. else in the world, and they'll answer my question. So it's really good fun, uh, great people. Uh, you look up Consuela Foundation on the yeah. internet right here in They're Hawaii. Great organization. Wonderful story, great people, great board of directors, a who's yeah. who of Honolulu yeah. uh, for it. But uh, been really proud, and we're really grateful that Dr. Benny Ron introduced in this film. Yeah. Well, we thank you all so much for tuning in. And can we just share that um, it was really nice to attend the um, Think Tech Hawaii party. Yes, we were thinking <laughs> last week we had the Christmas party for Think Tech Hawaii. We had a yeah. grand time. Yeah, it was got a to meet fun. a lot of interesting yes. people there. Thank <laughs> well, you. Well, thank you all so much for tuning in. Think Tech Hawaii, we try to keep it entertaining and educational. Thank you all so much.